Hello everyone, welcome back to Astrolabs. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to build a reverse shell disguised as a PDF and how to use it. You'll be able to run commands that let you find out who the user of the machine is and see contents of the directory that you're in as seen here. All of the code, steps, and necessary files to build the reverse shell are provided for free at the GitHub link in the bio. All I ask in return is a like to the video if you found it helpful. I'm going to give a little bit of context before we build a tool, but if you already have a strong idea of what a reverse shell is, feel free to skip to the appropriate timestamp below. So, what is a reverse shell? A reverse shell is a type of remote access where the compromise machine initiates the connection to the attacker system. This is the opposite of a traditional shell, where the attacker would try to connect directly into the victim's machine. In many cases, inbound connections like that are blocked by firewalls or NAT devices, making it difficult to get through. But with a reverse shell, the victim is the one reaching out to the attacker. Think of it like this, instead of you knocking on their door, they're calling you instead. Since outbound connections are usually allowed, this technique often slips past basic network defenses. For this demo, I'm running everything inside a lab environment using two virtual machines. The first one is a Windows 10 VM that's going to act as our victim. This is where we'll run the reverse shell. The second is a Kali Linux VM, which will play the role of the attacker. We'll be using Netcat on Kali to catch the shell once the victim machine calls back. Just make sure both VMs are on the same local network or that they're using a NAT configuration that allows them to talk to each other. Without that, the connection won't work. Now let's get right into coding. Once again, if you don't feel like coding along or finding your own fake PDF or PDF icon, feel free to visit the GitHub repo in the link below. I originally planned on coding along, but I think it may be easier for all parties involved if I already have the code written out, and then I just go by and explain it line by line. We start by importing the necessary libraries. These include subprocess for running shell commands, OS and sys for handling file pass and execution context, socket for network communication, and threading so we can run the PDF and the reverse shell at the same time. Finally, we'll import web browser, which will open the PDF decoy for us. Next, we define a function called OpenPDF. This function checks if the script is running as a compiled PyInstaller executable by checking for a special attribute called meIPass. If it finds it, it uses the temporary directory where the bundled files are stored. Otherwise, it uses the current directory where the script is located. From there, it builds the path to the decoy PDF file, which in this case is named fakeResume.pdf and opens it using the system's default PDF viewer. The idea here is pretty simple. When someone opens the file, they'll see a legitimate looking PDF document spawn, and so they're much less likely to suspect that anything malicious is happening in the background. Now let's take a look at the reverse shell logic in the connect back function. First, it creates a TCP socket and connects back to a hard-coded IP address and port. In this case, the attacker IP of my Kali machine is 10.0.0.5, and I'm working with port 444. This is the attacking machine, which should be listening for incoming connections using a tool like Netcat. It's at this point that you would change this IP address to the IP address of your attacking machine. Once the connection is established, we enter a loop that constantly listens for incoming commands. When a command is received, it checks whether the command is exit, and if so, it breaks the loop and closes the connection. Otherwise, it runs the command using the subprocess module and captures both the output and any errors. It sends this result back through the socket. If there's no input, it sends back a default message indicating the command executed successfully, but didn't return anything. In this final accept statement here, if any errors occur while receiving or executing commands, they're caught by an exception handler, which then sends back the error message so the attacker can see what went wrong. Finally, at the bottom of the script, we launch the two main actions. We start a new thread that runs the open PDF function we mentioned before, so it doesn't block the rest of the script, and then we immediately start the reverse shell by calling the connect back function. This design allows the script to simultaneously open a harmless looking PDF while establishing a remote shell in the background. With all that coding done, we can now build the executable. So what we're gonna want to do is go up here. If you're using Visual Studio, you can click terminal. We'll open a new terminal. The command to build the executable is the following. Also make sure that you're in the reverse shell directory. This command is not 100% necessary, but what it does is use PyInstaller to compile the Python program into an executable, and it also will attach the PDF icon to the file so that it appears to be a PDF instead of an executable. So we'll just go ahead and run that command and let PyInstaller do its thing. 
Once that is complete, hopefully you didn't get any errors at all. And you can see now that the build is complete, the results are available in this directory, dist. We'll go ahead and go up here, click this drop down, and now you can see our resume.exe. So this is the executable file that was created from using PyInstaller on the Python program. So after your program has compiled successfully, we're gonna go ahead and open it up in a file directory. You should see the following files. If you clone the link from my GitHub, we want to navigate to the disk directory. And then here we go. We now have our resume file with the PDF icon. I've already dragged this over here and dropped it onto my Flare VM machine. I also have my attacking machine set up over on the right. Now that the executable has been dropped onto our victim machine, I want you to go ahead and start up your listener on your attacker. We'll do that using the command NC for netcat attack LVNP space 4444. And if you remember, this is going to be the port that we're listening on and go ahead and press enter. We're now listening on any interface on port 4444. Before we get started with this attack, I want you to imagine this. You're a penetration tester hired to test a company's security. One of your first moves is to target the HR team because they handle sensitive hiring documents and employee data. You craft a pretty convincing email to a recruiter using ChatGPT for assistance, something like new candidate resume with a seemingly harmless attachment. The recruiter, pretty busy and trusting, clicks on the file. Unknowingly, they launch a reverse shell on their machine. Now you have a foothold inside the company's network ready to explore further. Now let's go ahead and simulate that. Let's say the recruiter is clicking right here to open up the new candidate resume they see. And what do you know? The resume pops up, but over here on our attacking machine, we can now run commands like who am I? And also see the content of their directory. We can see right here, we have all of the files that are listed over here on the left side. And just like that, we have remote access to a target system. Again, this is a lab and for educational purposes only. Anyways, a tool like this will not pass any antivirus or EDR at all. So um, do yourself a favor and do not even attempt this. If you enjoyed this breakdown, please give the video a like and consider subscribing for more videos on offensive security, malware, and reverse engineering. I'll be digging deeper into persistence, encryption, and AV evasion in future videos. And remember, this knowledge should only be used responsibly and legally.